Madeline Blair, and this is Unlocked. Now also on the Conscious Business Network channel here on E360 TV. If you're that person who reaches for goals that challenge you to fully reach your potential, this show is for you because this is a show all about opening possibilities so that when you're hit with the unexpected, you have options from which to choose. You can learn more about the show on my website at madelineblair.com and at the specific page, madelineblair.com slash unlocked TV, which includes replays of earlier shows. For now, this is our first appearance on the Conscious Business Network channel here on E360 TV, and I thank you for joining me today. Our topic today is beauty and photography. One day, an interviewer asked me what was so important to me that I wished I could attend to it every day. That question forced me to put my feelings into words. The question surprised me, but my answers just surprised me more. The answer was beauty. What I could attend, I actually do attend to every single day. All the what's began to tumble out of my mouth, almost as if they were happy to be let out finally. I observe how the colors of a book enhance the topic it espouses. I arrange flowers for the table. I take notice of the interaction between a mother and a child. I take time to look at the progression of a story, sometimes called the story arc. I listen for when a presenter answers someone's question in a simple yet clear and respectful manner. I was surprised as the list seemed to go on and on. A few months later, I was talking with Diana Whitney on this show, a brilliant researcher and facilitator, and she asked me, so Madeline, how do you define beauty? Well, if describing what I do every day to see beauty in my life was nothing compared to the sudden insight I gained from answering Diana's question, I answered without hesitation. Beauty is what opens the heart, I said. Diana seemed excited about my answer. She agreed beauty is one that opens possibilities well beyond what is just pretty. She added that beauty is also the moment when a job is completed and feeling you're just feeling so satisfied that the job is well done that the final product, product is called beautiful. Or perhaps it's a workshop to a level of connection and trust that the work achieved more than the stated goals. And you say, wow, that was a beautiful design. Or maybe it was the moment when you painted the last law wall <laughs> in the living room and you find yourself saying, oh, it's beautiful. In these examples, the feeling that was engendered was keen satisfaction or even amazement. As I noticed that in each, at each case, an emotion was engendered. And I remembered something months, months earlier. I had been thinking about something entirely different when the thought arrived that beauty is emotion. Now, I could see it isn't exactly the emotion, but rather that it evokes one. And that one that it evokes has a kind of generative nature about it. It gives and enhances life. Now I was beginning to see the grandeur of this simple word that captured us and captures us, sometimes unaware. And so I was so happy when I read that H.G. Wells said one time, beauty is not in the eye of the beholder, beauty is in the heart of the beholder. Today, the emphasis is on being attractive, attractive enough to attract business to whatever we are selling, including ourselves. We call it branding. A career person thinks about their branding from the color selection on their website, to font type, to language used, and to how they look. Today, we're gonna to talk about beauty. We're gonna talk about branding. We're gonna talk about what it means to bring your real beauty to the world. We're even going to talk about ageless beauty. We're going to take a short break so that you can think 
about, what you're curious about, and what you'd like to ask my guest if you were in my seat. So stay tuned. Well, welcome back. You're listening to Unlocked. I'm your host, Madeline Blair. And our guest today, let me bring her on screen, is Anne Landstrom, an award-winning photographer who brings out more. Anne, welcome to Unlocked. Thank you so much, Madeline. I love I love your intro talking about beauty. That That is uh, uh, exactly what beauty is all about because let me just uh, knock it out of the park that beauty does not have a face. <laughs> essence. Yeah, I love that phrase. It does not have a face. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, l- let me tell my audience about you a bit because uh, there's a reason you're here besides being a photographer. Anne is an award-winning photographer, as I've mentioned, with over 20 years of experience. She has been featured in Huffington Post and one habit for entrepreneurial success. And Anne is about building self-confidence during hard times to empower women through helping them love their body. So again, welcome to Unlocked, Anne. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mellon. All right. One of the things that makes you stand out to me is that your work is about celebrating the person within. What else makes you different? as a photographer? Well, I I believe for me, I have done a lot of self-development and uh, I take the time to dig a little deeper than beyond the image. So when my clients call me, I I always ask a lot of questions. Oh, who who they are, um, how do they see themselves? What are their struggles? uh, What... um, what are the struggles to to find their clients in their marketing or if they even have marketing a lot of my clients that come in they uh they don't know where to start they're they're women <laughs> most of my clients are women between 40 and 65 and um, they they're coming from corporate or from starting a, a new business or they're coming from a divorce and they have to start over they've been a housewife all their lives so it's really digging deeper into who they are as a person to be able to create uh, their per- personal brand. So that's that's what I do. Oh, gosh, I I really appreciate that you ask lots of questions. Uh, I know when I work with a new client, not because I'm taking photographs, but because I'm helping them, you do have to understand what how they see themselves, and that's yes. kind of where you must begin. And then you you, you may you may have some secrets for drawing out even more. Uh, for example, I often ask them to tell me stories. And and it's amazing what you can learn about a person when they tell a personal story to you. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. And and we as individuals see ourselves a lot different than other people see us. Yeah. No question. No question. <laughs> 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 well, I know I know I have some some thoughts about myself. And when people give me, you know, describe me back and I go, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I, I was that too. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's really fun. But you know, I I would like, I know we have some some examples of your work, and I wonder if we might begin with branding and talk sure. a little bit more about that. Yeah. By and and talk about about some of your images. I would love that. All right, let's do that. Here we go. Here's here is one example. I I, I wonder if you just disc, do talk a little bit about each one and and I think there're just a couple of them that we have here on branding. Yeah, so this client here, she has her own um vitamin and health nutrition and uh skin line. And um, but she's also getting into life coaching and coaching other women uh, 50 plus. So she, rather than just having a, a picture of you sit, with her sitting there, it, 
the reason I had her put her hands out like this is because later in her marketing, we can put words here. We can uh -huh. say, how are you? Uh, what is your struggles? Do you struggle with uh, menopause? And so I do a lot of a lot of that in my marketing so people are in the images so people can use that in their marketing later. Oh, I never I never envisioned that when I yeah. when I do a shot. It never yeah. occurred to me that our hands could be used that way. Yeah. Ah, oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, let's, do we go to another one? I, by the way, I want to say th this captures so much that idea of health because of the whiteness, yeah. the cleanness, the plant, yeah. all those little pieces yeah. in there. Yeah. Now here's one that I love. You know, it's I, interesting. Anna. I am so sorry. I told you I was working from home today and I have a, a dog and she is she never does this and now because i am on camera she's running back and forth back and forth with a toy making noise so if you hear anything in the background i'm just saying that is my <laughs> toddler <laughs> so well, okay sorry for about that explanation that. those things happen and you know i think yeah. that's one of the things that it covid was actually a gift for us that or a, co a gift within COVID. it's life right yeah, it's, exactly it's life. yeah exactly well i wanted speaking of life this branding image, I just loved. I looked at it and I said, this man tells stories. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could expand on who this is and why you chose this. Yes, this is Joe, And in, interesting story uh, that she, you should never judge anybody about their cover. Okay. They appear. I mean, you don't know what's behind the, the initial appearance with somebody. Uh, so Joe had, uh, he had actually hired a stylist. Uh, he was, is a uh, musician and he travels and plays all, he's kind of like a sophisticated hippie, so to speak. He, he travels all over and he lives, he had a, a some sort of trailer kind of car that he lived in so he can travel and play at all these places all around the country. And, um, but he knew he wanted to become a speaker and go speak and tell his stories. So he hired a, he hired a, a stylist. He hired me, and uh, uh, we groomed him because he was a little rough around the edges, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fixed his beard. And you know, uh, my son is the amazing job, and uh, we took his brand to a whole other level because because of the, the visuals of mm -hmm. um, how where he wanted to go with with himself and and his brand. Ah, oh, I, I I really appreciate that backstory because as soon as I saw it, I, I said, this is a storyteller. I mean, I've worked with storytellers yeah. for a long time and, if, and and I do it even with corporations, uh, but I could just see and hear that story coming out. And so your your background is, is totally supportive of that. Yeah. Well, I, you know, while we're on branding, I'm curious, what should people think about as they consider their own brand? Well, I think these days we are so busy. We don't, uh, and we don't meet in person as much anymore. I mean, number one, uh, before COVID, because people were just very just busy. And uh, you met on Zoom or on through email or through phone calls. So we don't really meet in, in person. So when... And also, we don't have a lot of patience, okay? We, we, we've, it's like, you think about your brand as a dating site. You know, you go, <laughs> you flip left or you flip right. It's all about the appearance. Because all you know, when, when I go to your website or somebody else's website, I'm going to look at who who are you compared to your three competitors. And you want you, you, because you are your brand if you're your own business. And you want your images and your copywriting to pop off, pop off the, the page. And it's not really about you. It's about me as a client. So what can you do? What is my pay, what is my pain point that you are fixing? And that's what we create with the images. That's why I'm asking all these questions in the original consultation is so I can understand, oh, okay. And then what, what is your brand colors? Because you want to keep on having brand recognition. Like if you're on all different platforms, 
I want to make sure when I come to LinkedIn or Instagram or your Facebook or your website, oh, that's Madeline. Yeah, because I recognize your brand, your brand colors, your images are on brand. So uh, I hope that helps a little bit. I mean, obviously there's a lot more to it, but that's that's it. We go more in depth into the consultation. And then there's fonts, right? What kind of fonts mm -hmm. are you using? Uh, what kind of story do you want to tell with your images? Um, so, yeah. All those things. You know, it, color is one thing that I'm very keen on. Uh, I, I was trained as an artist for many years, and, and so I'm very aware of, of color. Yeah. And it's a real challenge if, if I'm sitting on this show every okay. week. I don't want to be in the same colors, even though I know the colors of my brand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, for example, just, uh, what just came to me right now, if you, I mean, you can, use, you can wear different clothing. What if you had the same, like made a, a, a color glasses? Like I know that your your brand your thing uh, what do you call it um, the graphic is an orangey brown. Well, what if you got a pair of orangey brown glasses and that's your signature brand? So mm -hmm. in all your that's what you wear. That's kind of becomes you and your brand. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to have to think about that one, Anne, because one of the things we do in that graphics that you were talking about, which goes on social media, yeah. uh, is that we change it by season. So it's it's that color because this is fall. <laughs> and in spring... You have to have of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to just change my glasses. <laughs> oh, but this is that's a ter terrific... But that's just an example, right? Of yeah. something. I have, I have one client. She's 80 years old. And she started something called Who I Am Makes a Difference. It's a little blue ribbon that you pin over and, and please go and look at who I am makes a difference dot org. This, uh, this woman are changing lives with one little blue ribbon that you pin uh, over your heart and you do a little one minute uh, acknowledgement of that person. This blue ribbon has saved suicides, bullying, um, I mean, she's traveled around the world speaking at the, the uh, speaking next to the Dalai Lama and presidents and all that. But we, when, we, when I was photographing her, she has this really owl kind of glasses. Like, and I, and I said, and I call, she calls herself Grandma Sparky. And I said, Grandma Sparky, those glasses are your brand. That's, that's like, you so now with everything that we do it's like we, we always have the glasses the glasses on there because that's just her she has wears those glasses all the time oh i'm gonna have to look her up yeah she's maybe she's get her on the amazing amazing maybe i can get her on the show <laughs> yes she's on a mission to empower uh, a billion people and believe it or not she is at i think 50 or 60 million right now wow wow yeah. Wow, that's that's yeah. so that is totally awesome. But now speaking of impact, I understand that you're going to do some more on branding because you're offering a branding, what do you call it? A branding ceo.com. There's going to be a, a, a workshop that's or yeah. class that you're offering. Yeah, it's it's a core, it's a six-week course, and it's launching in January. I'm doing a Black Friday. Uh, pre-launch uh, starting, well, it's really starting now. So I will give you a, a, co a code for that for your audience. Mm -hmm. But what it is, what I put together is because I get a lot of out-of-town clients and I also get clients that are like, oh, are you coming to Florida or are you there? Or I wish you were in my city. Mm -hmm. And so between all that and all of my clients' pain points that I hear all the time, like, I don't know, I know I need pictures, but I don't know what, what's next. What do I do next? So what do I do with them or how? So I, I put together a course where, number one, we will, we will talk about who is your perfect client because some people don't even know. And mm -hmm. if you don't know who your perfect client is, how, how are you going to market? Okay. Yes, yes. How are you going to market to that person? Mm -hmm. Because we don't know who, who he or she is. Or there might be multiple people. So eventually, if you hire a marketing team or if you're going to run ads or anything, you got to target your audience. So we talk about a lot. That's like we talk a lot about that. We talk about uh, clothing, um, brand, you know, brand props, uh, lighting. I, I'm going to teach um, uh, 
I will teach how to do your own branding images. Yes, they're not going to look exactly like mine. I have 20 years in the photography business <laughs> plus. I'm a professional. I'm actually an award-winning master photographer at this point. But I know with my direction of lighting, um, backgrounds, cameras, I mean, you can get a pretty decent uh, decent image these days with an iPhone. The iPhone has the camera on the iPhone has, has you know, come a long way. And uh, if you knew how to, how to set it up correctly, how to set up lighting, or if mm. you don't have lighting, if you have a window, you can still get great mm. images. It, it's, it's, about, it's about the light. It's about the posing. It's about your expressions. It's about all of that. Which oh, I'll fabulous, you. fabulous. And, and you're going you're gonna to send me the coupon, and, and I will have that posted on my website in the replay area. Yes. So that if you feel like you want it, and I'm sitting here yeah. thinking, uh, do I have time in January to do this? <laughs> yeah, and and uh, well, what, um, once the course, the first the first time I'm, I'm releasing the course, it will be a weekly release, and then after that, it will be like an evergreen, so you can just buy the course. But it will be Mondays the course, or uh, each module will be dropped, and then Thursday I will jump on a Zoom call. So every qu any questions you have from the first module, mm -hmm. I will personally answer those. Okay, and, so but, they, but people can get more information for themselves if they go to brandingceo.com. Correct. Yes. All yes. right. Now, you you do different kinds of, of photography, and we have some more examples, which I'd love to show our audience, uh, because what I see in yours is that every one of them finds beauty in that person. Now, let me come, let me see. Why are you saying to remove? Okay, I know what's happening. All right. Now, here's an example of another branding one. But I brought this one up because I want to contrast that to the same person as a portrait. I wonder if you talk about that. I, I, I'm going to, I'll say, you tell me which, which image you want to have up while you're talking. So this man here, uh, his name is Patrick Carney. He is an international um artist he he has painted the beatles michael jackson um prince and hand delivered the paintings to them wow um yeah he, please go look him up his art is amazing and i uh, and i wanted to capture the, the him with his art and also the essence of who he is and um I, I thought I love this portrait of him because it's almost like he's thinking about his what his creation or what he's create, creating next. Or I mean, there's a lot of things that we can say about this portrait. It's just not a look in the camera and smile. It's it, it <laughs> gives a little bit more about what could he be thinking about? Yeah. And what 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 is he what is he doing what 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 is his next uh, next move and that's what i love about photography because you can create stories with yeah. the images yeah when i looked at this image i all i could see were wheels turning in his head he's mm -hmm. he's constantly uh, absorbing and uh, uh ob observing as mm -hmm. well okay here's another one i think oh this goes yeah now this is another portrait one which i thought was just stunning yeah. So this um, is also a client of mine. Uh, this is Lisa Nichols. She is a international, probably one of the top female in speakers in the world, in my opinion. They call her the GOAT, greatest of all time. Um, if you ever saw the movie The Secret uh, about the law of attraction and manifest manifestation, she was, in, she was one of um, the people in there. And she travels around the world and do a lot of, she does inspirational and transformational um, speaking and courses. And, and uh, she's absolutely amazing. If you don't know who she is, look her up on YouTube. She has a lot of, she has her own channel. Um, she now has a married, the love of her life. She waited a long time, first marriage. She's 53, 54, I think. And she moved to the Bahamas because that's where, he's located but she still comes over here and uh, um she's just if is if i've seen anybody that has a direct line to the universe god whoever you pray to it is her 
Oh. She, it's just downloads. I have seen her in action, and it's uh, it just gives me the chills just to, to think about it. But she's and just an amazing human being. Yeah. What is her name again? Lisa Nichols. Okay. Fabulous. Well, she yeah. she's been on yeah. Oprah. She, she's been. I mean, she's been a lot in the media and on TV shows, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wow. Well, you can. I hope the audience by now is beginning to see my excitement about how you bring incredible beauty because in every one of these images evokes something in me. It's not just, oh, okay, that's nice. No, it evokes something it's powerful. Yeah. Mm. Well, what I think um, who, uh, one thing that I hear a lot of my clients say is, but Anne, I hate being in front of the camera. I am not photogenic. And <laughs> I say, well, I know most people would probably go to the dentist before they cut, step in front of the in front of the camera. Because why? Well, when you step in front of the camera, you have to you have to see and like all of you. And a lot of people don't like all of them. You know, they, they you you have all this negative self talk in the mirror, and you beat yourself up. And and I created a, a, a I say to my client, you know what? We have banned the word photogenic in my studio. In my studio, everybody is soul genic. And whoever came up with photogenic, who created that word? Who created a photogenic? Who decided that some people are, be, looks better than others? I mean, that's just, uh, that's just a conditioning that we have been taught that, you know, if you're, to be five foot 10 and skin like a rail, that that's attractive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a, a condition that we have been taught since forever. Yep. And now, finally, we have models in all sizes and all ages. Yes. Yes, I've, I've noticed that there's been a, a shift. At first, it was slow, but now it's quite consistent that you can see models of, of all different, yeah. as you say, of all different sizes and in shapes. In my opinion, beauty has no age. No. Now, speaking of which, I think we should we should talk about your work on ageless because yeah, I, I think it's that. totally awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, it, this is a publication you do? Yeah, so actually I, I, I'm sitting here with, 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 my, with the magazine right here. So I'll, I can give you the backstory of why, uh, why I did this. <clears throat> so 10 years ago, uh, I came out of a really, really bad situation, uh, abusive marriage. I was, it was verbally and mentally abusive. And I actually ended up homeless. Um, I have three sons and my youngest son was five at the time and the other, the other two are older um, and, and they were fine. But him and I were more or less uh, couch surfing at friends' houses and uh, slept, we slept in my car. I don't know how many times because your your um, I think when you go to trauma, your your mind and your is protecting you. So a lot of times you can't remember things because of that. You know, it shuts down just for survival mode. So I was definitely in survival mode for so many years, uh, going through all that trauma until I, I I decided that you know I need to heal myself from this and and move forward. So eventually I, I did get a job. I find a job on Craigslist, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> as I was a photographer, I looked for photography jobs, and there was a boudoir, and boudoir is uh, being photographed in your lingerie studio where I live that was looking for photographers, and I applied for that for the job, and I, and I got it. And they said, well, to work here, you actually have to have your own boudoir session first. And I'm like, oh, you know. Does that mean that I have to be seen and photographed in my lingerie, in my underwear? As you can imagine, the last thing coming out of an abusive <laughs> marriage was feeling sexy and feeling and having that, which uh, so many women, and I was in my early 50s. I mean, I just turned 60 this year. So I um, I did not want to take my clothes off and, and do that, but I needed a job. I, I, and uh, I thought, this is so cheesy. But I need the money. <clears throat> so, okay. So I did it. And it was so empowering. Mm. And I can't explain why exactly. But it's something happens when we have to like literally strip down and own all of you and all or all of me. 
uh, in front of that other person that is capturing that and and um, it was just very empowering and and I thought okay this is this is something that I really want to do so I, I I got the job and then I ended up this woman ended up having 15 studios across the country and I was uh, editing for three of them and I was a photographer for one of them and she said Anne I don't know what you're doing but you have the highest numbers in the co in the company keep on doing what you're doing and I'm like I don't know what am I doing what am I doing and then and then it's like you know what I'm doing I'm putting the camera down and I'm saying Madeline tell me about you what are you here what's your struggles what do you love about your body what do you don't like about your body um, and we laughed we cried we sometimes it was I was more of a therapist than I was a photographer. <laughs> and sometimes I was more in therapy than I was a photographer. But what we did was we connected as human beings and as women. And that's when all the walls came down. And that's when I got the essence of that woman in front of my lens. So fast forward, I, I eventually got, turned my garage because eventually I, got a, I, I worked and I got a house. I got myself back on my feet. I created a boudoir photography uh, uh, studio in my garage. <laughs> I photographed <laughs> women on my living room table in my kitchen, my kitchen floor, and I, I was I was create. I mean, it it was it was about the experience. Of course, it was about the images as well, but it was about the experience. And and, and on, the, on the back end of all of this, I was also taking a lot of self development uh, courses for my own. Um, just to be, I was on a mission to become the best version of myself. So I would never be in a situation that somebody could do that to me ever again without me saying, heck no. <laughs> you, <laughs> and, and stand up for myself because my self-confidence was obviously not in, in the right place since, since he kept on you know, abusing me mentally and verbally until I didn't know who I was anymore. So uh, <clears throat> I opened my studio in 2017, and um, I, 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 when I was photographing women in, in boudoir, uh, I, uh, I, I heard and saw their struggles in, 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 in confidence and in self-esteem. And when we, when we get seasoned, like we are you know, in, in our 50s, 60s, 70s, and as this woman is 90, um, we have some backstories, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of those stories have we have been dragging around for a long time and not feeling good about ourselves. So, <clears throat> in this project, I decided I'm going to photograph women over 40 and um, in lingerie because I knew how powerful that was for loving. Because it's all about self love. It's all about owning yourself, no matter what size, what age and what you've been through and um i uh, when i when i first started running ads i was just flood i thought who's gonna who's gonna want to this is gonna be maybe a few women that was gonna come forward and do this i was flooded with phone calls and emails uh for this project and um so i ended up photographing in this magazine i photographed uh, i believe there is 52 women that actually did the whole project that I photographed and they also had to write a love letter to themselves <laughs> and believe me that's harder than you think <laughs> you sit down and start writing a love letter it's easy to write somebody else but once you write it to your to yourself that's a whole different ball game so um so, some women wrote really long ones some wrote just a couple paragraphs and um uh, and then there's some women that are, um, there is the images of them in here. But this woman here on the cover is her name. She calls herself the pink lady. She's nine, she has turned 90 this year. Uh, she is a little bit of a public figure celebrity in Los Angeles. She has her own uh, show, TV show or cable show there. And she does a lot in uh, the community for, I think, veterans and um She's she's very she's let's put it this way she's four foot seven and she <laughs> is very very active I I don't think I could keep up with her she she trademarked her name forty years ago as the pink lady and she has never wore another color since wow 
I think there's another picture of her. There. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I came to her house in Los Angeles and I photographed her. So here she's wearing like this pink 90, 90 gown and she's very sparkle. I mean, she loves dressing up as you can see and her, her hair is pink and uh, everything is pink in her house, even down to the vacuum cleaner. My goodness. And yeah. I think we have a couple more just so that people understand this is amazing. And, and here we see the contrast of the person without your treatment, I'll say, and how you photograph them. Yeah, it is. Um, what we do with this is, is I show women the best version of themselves, which mm -hmm. a lot of us can't see. And so, so yes, we will, we'll do hair and makeup. I have a great hair and makeup artist, so they will have the hair and makeup. And, um, and, and, and as you see here, she's, she's wearing a sweater, right? But it's still a sensual image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the expression and the pose. So it's yes. not about like looking like really sexy or that like it's all mm -hmm. hanging out, so to speak. Right. And, uh, it's it's about tapping into your feminine essence, which I believe is our superpower. Okay, well, let's go to the next one, which is also an awesome image. Yeah, and uh, this is Bettina, and she told me that this whole experience completely changed her life. It it's um, she. Uh, fell in love with who she was after this, which she did, was not when, when she walked in. And f for me, kind of being the midwife into um, helping women with this, I, I know that what I went through those years, 10 years when I was married to this man that made me, um, I mean, abused me mentally and, and verbally until I felt like nothing. I knew that this was this was the end result of why that happened because that it just made me so much more passionate about passionate about mm -hmm. gifting women the the gift of self love. Excellent. This has just been totally awesome in terms of what you have brought to the to to the uh, to all of us to to imagine. And I wanted to make one other comment. I, you talk about self-love and sometimes people think that that's a narcissistic or uh, it, it's not a good thing. And yet love always begins with acceptance. And I think just learning to accept who this body yes. Is, yes. is, is, is an enormous step for some people to take. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's think about it like when you're on the airplane, they say put the mask on first before you help somebody else. It's nothing different with self-love. How do you love somebody else if you don't love yourself first? So it's not a narcissistic thing. And I didn't love I didn't love myself for a very long time. And actually, Lisa Nichols, who I shot the portrait of that I was telling you uh, about, she said, um, start with mirror works. And I'm like, what's that? You go in the mirror every day and you say, I love you. I mm -hmm. see you. I forgive you. Yeah. And trust me, it's pretty powerful. And it's the, powerful. there will be some tears and breakdowns until you can actually look at yourself and say that and own it. You know, it, it, that reminds me of, and it's not going to sound like it's directly related, but it is when you describe the mirror work. I remember one time uh, I was a, an executive in a company and, and, and I took some actions as that person that was completely counter to what the other managers were doing. And they all said, how can you do that, Madeline? And my comment was, because I have to look myself in the mirror every morning. Yeah. And that's what occurred to me as you were saying that, that, that the mirror really is a, a powerful agent in our lives. If we make it that way, we can make it that way. It's 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 about your own inner integrity. Yeah, exactly. It's holding yourself accountable mm -hmm. to being who you are or your fullest potential. Wow. Well, I think you've given us a lot of things to think about, but 
let me just push it, to push it a little bit more. We're all, we all like to present ourselves the best way possible. And how would you advise those watching to do this for themselves? You know, whether they're in the process of developing their brand or maybe even as a teenager. Oh my goodness. I wish we could help teenagers more on this because it's a time of life when you're, you don't know who you are and yet you're yeah. trying to develop who you are. Or maybe you're even in the process, as you say, uh, in, in later in life, uh, you're 50 and you, you're ready to pivot. What are some things that we can do ourselves to, to begin to uh, develop that self-love, I think, that you're talking about? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think um, to become successful, it's an inside job. So it has to start with you. You have to be able to, to um, like, like in my business, for example, I, I, I did not become successful until I had done the work on myself where yeah. I could, like, I would feel like a fraud if I sat there and, and photographed women and told them all of, you know, all of this and, oh, mm -hmm. but if I didn't feel that myself and but trust me, I still, I just did a, and I, I, I'm not a big self portrait kind of photographer. A lot of photographers do self portraits all the time. And I, I, I haven't been one of them until just last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I set up, I had a photo shoot and I had my back dress up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to nothing to do Saturday night. I'm by myself <laughs> with my dog in the studio, and I set it up with my timer. And I started like with clothes on down photograph till I was just in my underwear. And I saw those pictures and I, the first thing I did was criticize myself, right? And I looked at <laughs> just like everybody else, like, oh my God, look at that stomach hanging over the, the pants, <laughs> the panties, whatever. And then I'm like, Anne, you know what? You're 60 years old. You've had three children. You have gone through all this stuff. You are not going to look... And, Everybody, you are not ever going to be 25 again when you're 50 or 60. You're just <laughs> not. We need to accept who we are today because beating yourself up constantly, it, it's we can't change it. We can't go to Nordstrom's and say, hey, can I exchange myself into a 25-year um, younger version of me? It, it just doesn't work that way. So... I think self-love, no matter, it, you just have to love yourself. Yeah, you might not be happy with, I mean, I don't know, some anybody that's super happy about getting older or aging, it's, it's <laughs> uh, but that's life. Yeah. So we just have to accept that. And, and to help, um, to help that acceptance, yeah, if you need to go and um, buy some sexy lingerie, even if you're single or you know, just do it for yourself, because when you when you feel good, you look good. And when you look good, you feel good. It just goes together. Yeah. Yes. And even yeah. when I was homeless, nobody knew because mm -hmm. I was the best dressed homeless person out there. I had my suitcase in the back of the car. I always made sure I looked good. I was a professional hider. Nobody <laughs> knew. And there's so many of us that we don't know what the backstory is because we carry that guilt and shame that people are going to judge us for whatever we've been through or going through. And I, I find the best thing you can do is talk about your story. Once I got my story out and, and uh, uh, it was, it was like, it was such a relief. Like yeah. now people, I can be all of me uh, vulnerable and, and it's okay. You know, Anne, as you say that, it, it really reminds me. One of the very first practices I say in my book of Unlocked is that you write stories about yourself, mm -hmm. your stories from your life. And, you know, from any time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like five minutes ago or from when you were five, it, it doesn't matter. It's those it's those times when you, you really begin to understand who you are and what made you, what formed you. Yeah. So I really appreciate that so much. And, and this... This has been an awesome conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, love I must it. say it, it has taken me uh, all town, all kinds of paths, which yeah. which I really appreciate. Really appreciate. Yeah, well, I can give one tip for like self love, okay, uh, or two actually. If you go in the mirror and do and do the mirror talk every 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 day, but then also pick up your phone, take a picture, 
and in some cases it might be 40 before you, there's one that you like <laughs> of yourself <laughs> uh, and then compliment yourself say and I really like um, how your eyes look today or you got a nice smile or if if you if you really have a hard time because it's really hard sometimes to compliment our own self we, we can compliment other people all day long but it's really hard to do it to, to ourselves um, but when I start doing it my photographer mentor she was she was teaching this and when I start doing it I actually put together a selfie love Facebook group and I invited all my friends and I said okay we're gonna do this every Tuesday and we're gonna post it in the group and then we're gonna post what we said about ourselves and some women couldn't even post their face they posted their boots okay oh. so it took it took a while for women to open up and be able to do that but it, it really works once you're you're in that process it does work Excellent. Excellent. Well, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your time and, and you sharing such wisdom with us. I, I, I'm very much appreciative of that. And, and I, I loved the word soul genic. That's one yeah, I'm going to start using. Great. So again, thank you for your time and your generous. You were so generous. I, I, again, my appreciation to you. Thank you for having me, Madeline. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What, what a wonderful, wonderful conversation. You know, so many things that I've, I've learned today. But I'm thinking, you know, resilience actually has its roots in self-confidence. And knowing who we are is essential to building resilience because it helps us call on everything we have when life asks us for more. It's one of the first things my practices work on. Your appearance is part of who you are. It's not the whole picture, but still a part. So based on what I have learned today, I think that just knowing more about what you bring to the world from your inside gets reflected on the outside as well. I mean, I can just imagine Anne pulling that out, not, not to pull the words out, but to help you see it and recognize it yourself. And when we focus on our true self and what we bring to the world, we root ourselves and we become more resilient. Take a moment today and remind yourself of the gifts you uniquely bring to the world. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Unlocked. If you have, make a comment in social media about what you learned and might do differently as a result. And if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn, click the like button. Better yet, subscribe or follow me. Check out my book, Unlocked, for practices that actually work. If you would like to explore what it means for yourself to build and nurture your resilience, send me an email to Madeline at MadelineBlair.com and I'll get right back to you. And if you would like to join a group mentoring session, again, write and tell me that I'll keep you informed when the next group mentoring session is scheduled. And I want to thank you again for joining us on this segment of Unlocked. I'm Madeline Blair, wishing you infinite possibilities as you unlock your resilience. Thank you.